Thank you for that. So I'm feeling mildly uncomfortable because I didn't get all the list of the digital buzzwords that Mark put up there. Um, and my name's Ali Neal, I work for a, a large organisation and we are guilty of a number of buzzwords so hopefully you won't throw too many things at me if, I, uh, if I'm guilty of uh, crossing them. Um, very interesting talks though that we just had I think uh, and I'm very relieved that um, you know, Verify was one of the platforms which uh, Mark highlighted as a, hopefully, a success story because it's something that we've been embroiled in uh, for probably two years now. Um, it was also interesting to hear sort of the rhetoric from some of the other speakers. So Brian touched upon the pressures of, um, of cost uh, going forward with the next government, the, you know, the biggest cuts and the second biggest cuts that are pending, uh, the digital opportunity for everyone, uh, Nick touched upon the, the change from digital by default to digital by design, which is very interesting, and the importance of using technologies like the cloud as the foundation. So, so very interesting from, from our perspective. I want to touch upon um, what Verizon's doing with regards to the government and hopefully how it's relevant for, for everyone here. Um, I guess by way of introductions for those of you who are unaware, Verizon is, is a, a large um, information communications technology company. Uh, about uh, 20 billion of our organisation serves governments and enterprises around the world. And we serve them with security solutions, uh, communication solutions and cloud-based solutions. Uh, so we are in the identity business and have been in the identity business for around 15 years. Some of the organizations that we acquired over history, uh, you may have heard of Betrusted, uh, Baltimore Technologies. These are organizations that we've built up identity practices um, over many years. And so, so we're responsible for working with enterprise and government, and we currently manage 125 million identities around the world with the likes of uh, with countries like Belgium, Malaysia, Hong Kong uh, and soon to be the UK uh, and also the US. So um, we do a lot in this space and we have a lot of conversations. Um, I guess to echo the points here, it is all about you know the, the revolutionary rhetoric that Marx talks to. There is an imperative which is cost saving and there's a huge opportunity in terms of um, the digital opportunity. None of it has, you know, the opportunity hasn't even been tapped into, um, has been tapped into, but the, there is so much more that can be done. And we know that from the engagements that we're having with local government and with government and with enterprise. So the need for change is one that is a responsibility for absolutely everyone here. Um, we know it's complex. We know that um, you know integrating systems out there, legacy systems, is complicated. We know that um, all of us are under pressure of, for the adoption of new technologies, things like machine-to-machine, -machine, cloud, the decentralisation of IT. All these kind of themes put pressures on all of us. And some of it is just rhetoric, and some of it is going to be useful for your for your businesses. But we know. The complexity is out there, and the way to address complexity is to adopt the technologies that have been simplified, such as cloud and identity as an enabler for cloud. Cost pressures we've covered already, uh, increasing for absolutely all of us. Um, we know that um, you know, from a transaction perspective, face-to-face -face transactions typically cost around eight pounds. Um, Telephone-based transactions cost around three pounds. Digital transactions average at 15 pence. So the more we can get pushed onto the digital platform, you know, the huge, huge savings are still there to be realized for all of us. Um, so we know that we need to drive more citizens online to make the savings that all of us are required to make, to meet the budgets that all of us have. But you know all this, yeah? So I'm, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Um, what I want to talk to you about is, is Verify. So this, um, to, to those of you who are unaware, this Verify project is currently in its public beta. 
And the essence of it is helping to connect UK citizens securely, safely, cost-effectively to government services. It's run by government digital services at the moment, and Verizon is one of the uh, identity providers that's been working with UK government for the last two years and gone through you know, all the challenges of this platform. Because whilst we say it's a cloud-based identity platform, and that just sounds nice and easy and glib, it takes a lot of work to actually make this thing secure, uh, integrate at the back end, uh, user friendly, um, go through all the, you know, when you're tr going through an authentication process, all the different gotchas that can happen. We've been testing this um, with GDS for, for quite some time now. So in terms of, of what it is in its current format, there are a multitude of identity, I say a multitude, there's around 10 identity providers, and Verizon is one of those with real identity heritage sitting behind us. There is then the identity hub, uh, which is the government verify, and this is paid for by central government. So going forward, as of the end of this month, where this goes, um, this is, is going to move out of beta, um, citizens will be able to log on, obtain their, uh, their citizen identity, and then we'll be able to log on to any number of different services using a single one-time password that will be sent out to the form factor of your choice. So you have multi-factor <laughs> authentication, i.e. you have something that you know and something that you possess. So a code will be sent to your mobile phone or to your landline or to, to, to whatever form factor is relevant to you. Verizon has a telecoms infrastructure behind it, so, and we have a security infrastructure behind us, so clearly we have the capabilities to fulfill this. What we see happening going forward, and this is not just us, this is not just sort of wishful thinking on our behalf because we want to scale the business. This is because we're a founding member of OIX, we're the Open Identity Exchange. This is because we talk to GDS. This is because we talk to a lot of local authorities and they're telling us they want to take advantage of this piece of work that has been done so that they don't have to you know, knife and fork it themselves, spend an awful lot of money, creating your own identity hub. So what we see going forward is a local government identity hub that matches into Verify, and, and we've positioned that already within G Cloud 6 framework. Um, Verizon has put that forward. And we're talking to a number of um, a number of local authorities, yourselves or your peers, to, to discuss how that will, you know, how that will be beneficial to you, where the cost savings would be that you would realise there, and how attribute sharing um, could really save a considerable amount of money in local government. So, uh, and going forward, we also see this being tied up with enterprise. So we serve over sort of 10,000 enterprise customers around the world. And, you know, all of us find this issue of identity management a, a problem. We have so many passwords that we forget them on a routine basis. I certainly do. So simplification of this area is going to be massively important. And we can see going forward common, uh, common passwords, common means of authentication, across enterprise, across local government, and across central government is quite a compelling theme for the citizen. So in terms of where we fit in, so this is all cloud-based solutions. Uh, we spoke about the benefit of the cloud. Verizon has cloud data centers, in 50 of them, around the world. And we, we happen to have put this platform on a dedicated public cloud. Um, it's got all those certifications up the top that all of you will be acutely aware of, and we maintain this. So it also takes away from you some levels of that compliancy headache, because we, we have to maintain our identity platform, our identity as a service platform, to these standards anyway, meaning some of the pain is taken away from you in this particular area. We host this service out of Amsterdam doesn't matter that it's not in the UK. We have a cloud platform in the UK, and we may put it in the UK, but it just so happens this one is out of Amsterdam. Uh, it's a fully resilient platform uh, and compliant to all these standards. We can do this in terms of the full range of public cloud, if that's something you want to do uh, for other applications, or if you want to completely hand, um, you know, bespoke it, we have private cloud infrastructure, and we could even put it on your premises. However, if we're going for scale, if we already manage 125 million identities around the world, and if you want to take advantage of this, 
we believe that is the most cost-effective platform for you to work. And that's why you know, we're encouraging uh, conversations, we're having those conversations with local government so that as Verify takes off to the citizen, why not take the, the advantage of utilising this within local government? So we have this idea, what should we do with it? There's hundreds of local authority processes to move online. So we were talking to Warwickshire, for instance, and talking about the investment that they've put into to blue light services and saying, you know, if, if you have put that level of investment, why can that not be shared? Why can we not use a shared cloud infrastructure, shared attributes, um, so, that, um, so that many other local authorities can take advantage of the, the centre of excellence that you have? So our thoughts and the discussions that we've been having with, with yourselves or your peers uh, around you know, how councils can potentially work better going forward with application A was on the back of the kind of Warwickshire discussions where you have someone as a centre of excellence that specialises in blue light services or particular areas of care or health care or housing. And, you know, the councils can take advantage through utilisation of something like Socotim as a fulcrum to have centre of excellences using a shared cloud-based identity infrastructure, using shared attributes that can really significantly reduce cost, make it much more convenient to try and push people onto the use of your digital platforms and do it in a safe and secure manner. Because, you know, the most important thing here is really ease of use, safety and cost. That's the key thing here. It's not going into where we've previously been before, which is how clever and sophisticated the, the security of the identity and access management is. It's about <laughs> convenience, cost and doing this kind of thing, the sharing of information. So, um, so I hope that's been useful for you. We have a breakout session later, so I'd really like for uh, some of you to come along and talk to some of our experts around cloud and identity, how this is going to be relevant to you, because we can certainly see, in terms of everything that has been spoke about from the previous, from the previous speakers, um, this will align to the agendas that, that we believe you all have. Cost saving, simplification. So that's it from me. Thank you very much.